Hello, everyone. Welcome to another great episode. And today we have Nithin Ramachandran, the Director of Data and Decision Science Platforms at Kohler. And today we're speaking about a product view to data science. So welcome to the show, Nithin. It's such a pleasure to have you today. Thank you, Catherine. Good to be here. Thanks for having me on the Data Standard. Yeah, definitely. And uh, could you tell us more about your background and what led you to your role today? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, so so hi, everybody. My name is Nithin Ramachandran. Um, I've been in data for for, you know, from probably my entire career. It was not intentional. You know, I started my journey as a chemical engineer, um, you know, kind of focused on building simulations at the Indian Space Research Center, um, but then went on to a career in consulting, which is kind of where I started to see the role of data, you know, in the business. So, uh, you know, worked in a variety of industries, went from financial services and insurance to hospitality, and then wound up finding my way to healthcare and now in retail. You know, kind of in my current role, I, I kind of lead the global, you know, organization at Kohler. We kind of take care of the data and decisions platforms that essentially power all of our businesses. So kitchen and bath, retail business, our power business, as well as our hospitality business. And I think it's been exciting to kind of go through all of these industries because you get a different view. I've been on the product side, I've been on the service side, I've been on the consulting side. So it allows you to bring a very different viewpoint. And so it's kind of exciting to see where data is today. And, and you know, I'm very excited to be you know part of it. I mean, I, I kind of look back and always think as I'm as excited as I am today about data science as I was on day one. It's a good, fun journey so far. Yeah, definitely. And I hear so many stories about people saying that they came from different backgrounds in terms of um, their career choice that they had initially wanted. And they kind of just end up in a role that's more product related or data science related. So it's interesting to hear everyone's journey like that. And um, for you, so you work closely with um, the product as well, and just seeing it go from start to finish. So could you walk us through the process of maybe how you think about executing this kind of a plan? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And and I think it's, you know, kind of when we start thinking about, you know, data as a product, right? I think when you look at product oriented businesses, like you take a Fitbit or something like that, which runs on data, I think we've done a great job of kind of bringing that product focus, right? A lot of what I'm trying to do in my role at Kohler is bringing that kind of focus to an internal organization that's focusing on the internal business, right? So the kind of strategy we look at is very simple, which is looking at, you know, our business in terms of their maturity, in terms of data. So we look at, we look at taking them from, you know, providing them data as a service to data as a product, a decision engine, and finally getting data to the point where it's a monetization engine, right? Um, so that's kind of how we, uh, you know, kind of work through that entire process. So. Our teams are essentially split into kind of agile teams. So we look at every area of a business and the, the product that we're building for them. For example, supply chain. We focus on you know providing all the features that allow you to make all the decisions in supply chain from a data-driven standpoint. So we have agile teams and uh, you know we have product managers who work very closely with the with the business to enable to, you know kind of to bring in that product-based focus. So very much like you know kind of a, an external you know product-based company internally to what we do is we kind of work with the executives to have a strategic conversation of what are the key pain points in the business? How do we make sure that, you know, we, we just have a conversation about data as a strategic focus, right? So we build that map for where are the opportunities in the business that we can drive value through building features into our product. And then we work with, you know, kind of users in the business to actually bring that to life. So again, very similar process to what you would see in building an external product for a consumer base. We're kind of bringing that in-house to bring in that level of customer obsession that tie into value by looking at everything we do internally, you know, kind of as a product. And uh, it's a very different mindset from what you would, you know, kind of, kind of find traditionally, uh, you know, in internal teams where they take in a request and they serve a request. It just doesn't give you the ability to continue to improve and iterate on a product, right? So that's kind of why we've been pushing that kind of a focus you know, in a product-based approach for our internal data organizations. Yeah, no, that's a great process to have. And I know you had touched on the consumer aspect a bit here. And my next question is just, how do you kind of know what the consumer wants? Are you kind of pushing out surveys? Are you talking to past customers just to kind of ensure that customer attention? How does that kind of work? Yeah, for sure. I, th I think first of all, it starts with that strategic conversation with the executives, right? Where we get that three to five year view of what is the problem we're trying to solve and what's its significance to the business in that three to five year term, right? 
And then after that, you know, kind of once we know which is the area we're focusing on. So let's say that we're focusing on doing better forecasting, you know, for our supply chain organization. We actually find users, uh, you know, who the demand planners or the people who would be using that kind of an inform that kind of information, right? Um, and we actually spend a lot of time during that step to make sure we have the right people in the room, right? And I think that's step one of making sure you're building the right product, which has been hyper focused on who your customer is. And then after that, what we do is kind of our execution process is a mix of three schools of thought, design thinking, uh, lean product mindset, and agile, you know, scrum development. So we run design sprints with these users. Um, you know, we make sure that we really understand and we're able to empathize with kind of their day-to-day -day issues, where they're seeing the problems, what are the source of error in their decision-making, so that we can kind of really understand and target the specific area we want to focus on. From there, rather than going straight into development, we take that lean product approach of putting together a very simple solution for them, right? And, and usually, especially, and, and I know a lot of, uh, you know, probably my colleagues in data science will probably frown at this, but we actually don't even go to like building our data environments or any of those things, right? What we start off is saying, can we write a simple script, simple algorithms that run off of flat files in our data lake? and just give you a simple solution. It may not be perfect, but it will give you a view to what does that solution look like? What does the UX look like? You know, how does that data look like when you use it in decision-making? Initially, you know, it took a little bit to get users used to the fact that they may not be working with a perfect product and, you know, it has a ton of bugs. But once they understand that, hey, we're actually gonna come in at the back end with our agile development process, continue to scale and improve the product over time, you see a greater level of engagement. And you know, kind of the experience that we've had is our ability to use this process to, to hone in on what that user wants and know specifically what they want before we write a single line of code is quite powerful. And, and we've found that our users are more than happy to make that trade-off, you know, to get a product that they can use fast and test it out. Um, you know, that speed to market is something that, you know, kind of they enjoy quite a bit and they're willing to make that trade off, you know, to have a imperfect product that they can use immediately. So I think it's a balance of, of those two things, you know, kind of having, bringing those three schools of thought together, bringing a designed organization, a well-defined organization that can execute on that strategy and then spending a lot of time to focus on those users, you know, where we know for sure that these are the people that, you know, we want to target to drive that strategic value, you know, that we had focused on in our discussion with the executives. So yeah, it, it definitely takes a lot of people to get that executed and it takes a bit of time to get that process in place. And, you know, we're learning as we go to, but, but we found tremendous success with that approach. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And just being able to collaborate with everyone within the business and the team to really know what's best for the end goal overall. Yeah. I think that's great. And uh, what are some best practices that you and your team have kind of done to really enable a project? Well, that's a loaded question. Uh, that's, there's a lot, but I think fundamentally it starts from how we actually approach, how we organize ourselves to approach that problem, right? So our organization essentially has a platform and a product approach. So we have a platform team and we have product teams. So these are the product teams of the agile teams that I mentioned work very closely with the business. And then they're backed up by a platform team. So what the platform team does is they focus on actually the capabilities that we're building. So they're looking at it saying, okay, we're doing forecasting for our power business and we're doing forecasting for our retail business, right? How can we ensure that we transform that into a capability that can be exposed to the global level, right? So we have a platform team. So that's one of the key best practices that I've found, which is, you know, put in a product team that's focused on the business that stays close to the business users, make sure that they can deliver rapidly and then have a platform team in the back end to make sure everything that we have built is reliable and scalable, right? So that's the, the first key piece. The second part is something that I mentioned earlier, which is focus, right? You, you have to, there is always an opportunity cost with this strategy, right? Like you can't, as much as people like to say, like you can pivot as much as you want in Agile, that's actually not the way to go about it, right? I think it's very important to have clarity on, on what the high level strategy is. So one of the best practices we have done is working with the executives at a very high level to put in that data councils, you know, really focus on making data as a strategic conversation rather than, hey, here's a dashboard or an algorithm that I want, right? So trying to drive that strategic level conversation, that gives us focus and stability in terms of the, the direction that we're taking and, and the strategy that we're executing on. And finally, it's the users, right? I mean, Finding those, you know, the data product manager role is a role that's, you know, kind of come up in, in you know, common parlance, maybe in the last few years, right? We're used to having that in the, in the technology side with commerce businesses and stuff like that. But 
Having someone who can work very closely with the users, run these design sprints, empathize with them, make, you know, finding out ways in which we can insert data seamlessly into their lives, right? That's really the most important part at the end of it. So, and I think those are some of the key lessons that, that, that I've, you know, I've learned the hard way throughout my career, but, uh, but it's something that, you know, we've, we've brought together in a really nice fashion, you know, at Google. Yeah, definitely. And great insight there. And one of my last questions here is just the idea of this team structure and the people that you kind of work with. So do you think that in your opinion, is it better to be more of a, a generalist? So knowing a little bit about the business and the technology side, or is it better to just be a kind of a domain specialist and knowing mainly the technical stuff or knowing mainly the business side of things? What is your opinion on that? Well, I don't think there's there's a you know there's there's one answer to that, right? So I mean, I, I mentor a lot of um, you know folks who are looking to kind of get into the data science space, and this is one question they ask me, right? A lot of folks who are from an engineering background, and, and they're very clear about like, yeah, I want to be a specialist in data science or engineering or whatever, right? And then you have folks who actually come from a business background or you know, other backgrounds, like I've had uh, some of my past teams that I've run, even research teams, I had uh, someone who had a background in music and was a music teacher and came into data science. I had another individual who was a rock star on my team. Uh, his background was in history, right, and, and liberal arts. So the point is that there is a role for everybody in an organization, as long as you're putting the effort. So the way I look at it in terms of building my teams are always, I look at a generalist who can play that product manager role, right? The reason for that is, you know, they must be able to take in a variety of different viewpoints. And, and what we look for is that critical thinking ability to, to kind of put all of that together into an empathy map and, and a product feature set, right? But then the second part of it is actually the folks who are kind of focusing more on the development of the product. And that's really where you need specialists, right? And the reason why you want to have specialists is because, I mean, if you think about like the breathtaking rate at which, you know, this industry is going and I mean, if you looked at Python packages last year and Python packages this year, it's a completely different world, right? And so just keeping pace with, you know, what's the most modern solution out there and how you can bring that in um, to the work that you're doing uh, takes an enormous amount of specialization. The other part also is the complexity, right? I mean, when you think about how you interpret these solutions or how you interpret the output of an algorithm, to put it into a real life decision that could drive millions of dollars of, you know, business impact. I mean, you want to make sure you've, you know, you've tested it thoroughly, you've, you've covered all your bases over there, right? And I think that's where, again, that, that focus as a specialist becomes important. Um, so, so I think I look at it more as, you know, kind of you do need the generalists in the organization who can help steer towards, you know, kind of organizing the business problems and the features and, and, and the, the objectives. But then you need the specialists to bring in, you know, that level of, you know, innovation and sophistication um, to kind of delivering the value you intend to deliver. So, so yeah, to, to kind of, I know that's a long-winded answer, but, but I think there's a space for a generalist and a specialist in an organization. Yeah, no, I think that's some great insight for the audience to really think about as well. And it's not really a black and white answer. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you so much, Nathan, for joining us today. Um, we at the Data Standard, we're trying to build a community of data enthusiasts and data thought leaders where everyone has a place where they can network and collaborate during this time. And so is there anything that we could do for you? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think the most important part is what we're doing already, right, which is spreading the word, sharing the lessons and sharing the learnings. I'm sure there's a ton that I can learn from others as much as I have shared, you know, from the lessons that I've learned the hard way. The other part of it, I know that data science is in an ever evolving community. I mean, we're doing some exciting work at Kohler as well, and we're always expanding our organization. So yeah, if you're interested, if there's anybody in the community who's interested in working on, you know, challenging problems at a global scale, be it in any part of the, you know, the data spectrum from architecture all the way to the algorithms, feel free to reach out to me on, on LinkedIn or, you know, check our job boards, but love to definitely leverage the amazing community you have to encourage people to join our team. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. And to our audience, for more information on the Data Standard, you can find us at www.datastandard.io, as well as on our LinkedIn and YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Nathan, for joining us. It was so great to have you on the show today. 